Some bosses are so hard, you're just endlessly trying to find a way to beat them, and sometimes that means you gotta cheese them. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 funniest cheeses for hard bosses. Starting off at number 10 from Elden Ring, the Godskin Duo Sleeping Pot trick. Now, one of the most infuriating bosses in Elden Ring are the, these guys. You know who they are. The Godskin Apostle, the Godskin Noble, usually referred to as the Godskin Duo. You fight them both at the same time, and killing them is not enough because they die and respawn multiple times during the fight and if you fought them you know exactly why that is extra and annoying worst of all you're required to beat them if you want to progress to the game basically uh they really suck so any strategy that could make these guys less of a pain is of course a good thing they have one big weakness and it is sleep so the same weakness that i have i know where they're coming from on this one not really we're talking about the status effect that's usually not that effective against bosses but for whatever reason it just tears right through these guys one sleeping pot is usually all you need and it just knocks these guys out and they stay asleep for a while like literally around a minute or more before waking up which basically makes them sitting ducks the trick here is to build up as much damage possible and then unload on one of them hopefully killing them before they get the chance to wake up and then you just wait for the second guy to bring his buddy back to life and take him out too it's a trick that turns one of the most frustrating fights in the entire game into kind of a joke like just seeing them fall asleep is hilarious how many bosses do you know of that take a nap Nap. But obviously the satisfaction comes from destroying these guys that are normally a huge pain in the ass while they're totally helpless. And number nine, Skyrim's unrelenting force. Let's just say there's a reason most of the big bosses in Skyrim aren't near any big cliffs. In the Dawnguard DLC, you take on this dude called Verther, uh, the last of the snow elves. Depending on who you are, this guy can be pretty tough, but there is a really easy way to deal with him. Just uh, give him the old... He sent flying right off the ledge. That's all it takes. Dead. Don't got to deal with him. The only issue with this strategy is he has unique armor, and getting it when you've done it this way is um, it's tough. Like you should be able to find his body down there somewhere. Uh, but have you ever looked for a specific Lego that has been lost in the house? That is the exact feeling you will get looking for this man. It's honestly a pretty humiliating end to what is supposed to be a really big climactic boss battle, but it's really on them for putting the guy near a ledge. Like duh. People are gonna push him off it and number eight is dumb dante in devil may cry 4 often cited as the toughest boss in devil may cry 4 the dante boss fight is a real test of skill he's got pretty much all his classic moves and seems to have a counter for everything you throw at him but there are a few ways to make the fight a little more manageable now the funniest is probably this one all you have to do is get on top of the altar in the room where you fight him dante tries to jump up to where you are but he becomes vulnerable to pretty much everything while he's in the air so all you have to do is use your devil bringer attack to grab him and send him back to where he started that's all he can keeps jumping you keep grabbing him and that keeps happening until he's dead basically got no counter whatsoever to this incredibly a basic to be frank strategy and it turns what's supposed to be this epic duel into an awkward comedy and maybe not on the level of napoleon dynamite but that's far more intentional isn't it dante's supposed to be the ultimate badass but he's pretty easily thwarted by a guy standing on a ledge now so was anakin skywalker but that was due to his arrogance this is just dante seems to be dumb in this way it's over dante i have of the high ground and number seven the fear does not care about fire this is in metal gear solid 3 snake eater the fear is the second member of the cobra unit you take on in metal gear solid 3 and while this guy can be pretty challenging if you try to fight him fair he's a guy that honestly has more weaknesses than strengths and i mean there's a lot of stuff you can mess him up with and most of it's really funny the most obvious thing and the thing you're probably already aware of is that you can feed him poisonous food after his stamina gets low enough he starts searching around for things to eat to restore it and that's when you throw out some rotten food or a poisonous frog or something he just happily eats that garbage instead of something that'll actually restore him and that makes him really vulnerable from there you're free to just blast away at him but there's actually an even more cruel thing you can do to this big dope uh if you got a torch you can set him on fire for some reason he has no way of responding to being on fire he just basically ignores it so he just goes about his business like it's no big deal and he is engulfed in flames it's ludicrous to see all you have to do is wait him out and then get in the last hit and that takes him down for good for an elite commando you'd think he'd have some kind of self-preservation instinct but mm, feed him some rotten food set him on fire uh, maybe he knows it's rotten and is counting on you to set him on fire so that his body will cook the bacteria away i, I don't know i don't know <laughs> 
And number six is the toy gun versus the helicopter in Dead Rising 2. Uh, part of the fun of the Dead Rising games is you get all these useless weapons lying around that aren't effective as, against zombies, but they're really fun. Now, it is extremely rare that these things have alternate purposes that make them at least somewhat useful, uh, but usually those are intentional when they happen. This, oh, probably is not. In the last third of Dead Rising 2, there's a climactic moment where one of the main bad guys tries to escape Fortune City in a helicopter. In the cutscene, he managed to keep the helicopter from flying off, which kicks off the boss fight we're supposed to throw random junk at the helicopter's blades to take it down this all makes sense but here's where it starts to break down on top of all the junk on the roof another thing you can use to damage the helicopter is a toy gun like a toy spitball gun it's basically a nerf gun that shoots harmless little foam projectiles apparently it has to do with how the game is programmed though even though the toy gun shoots projectiles they're coded as thrown objects to make it so they don't do any damage the helicopter's blades however are only vulnerable to thrown objects so even even if you're shooting little foam darts at the helicopter blade, you are doing damage. This little trick can kill this boss in like seconds. The whole thing is basically just a coding quirk, but it's still hilarious to imagine something like this happening. It's like a dumber version of David and Goliath. And number five, this tiny tiger cheese is literal from Crash Bandicoot 3 Warp. Uh, a cheese that started off as a bug or an oversight and later acknowledged by the developers in a pretty funny way. The bosses in Crash Bandicoot games are the hardest, but there are some pretty annoying ones, and Tiny Tiger in Crash 3 is uh, one of those. At a certain time in the fight, he'll send out a bunch of lions that run through the arena in a straight line. What you're supposed to do is weave in between them to avoid taking damage, but the much easier way is to just run to the top level corner of the arena where the lions are never able to get you. There's nothing really funny about this trick in the original version of the game. What I described is, I mean, literally a pretty standard boss cheese, but the insane collection, uh, the developers snuck in a funny little Easter egg for anybody who, who tried this trick again. In the HD version of the game, hiding in the same spot will literally cause the crowd to throw cheese at you. Like, it's pretty rare when a boss cheese literally involves cheese. It is almost too perfect for a, a list like this. And number four, the Master Carpenter's Confusion from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh, one of those games that can either be pretty challenging or a total pushover, depending on how you're playing it. Like Symphony of the Night, which this game is a spiritual successor to, uh, there are a ton of weapons, movement abilities, and players will inevitably create scenarios that the developers didn't expect. One of the easiest ways to exploit powers in the game is the invert ability, which makes it so you can flip the entire world upside down. Most enemies just have no idea what to do about this move, even certain bosses. Probably the most well-known is the Master Carpenter, a pretty tough optional boss that puts you to the test normally but is made totally ineffectual by simply using invert. When you're standing on the ceiling he just doesn't know what to do. He keeps attacking but there's no way for him really to reach you so all you have to do is equip a weapon that has an overhead attack like the greatsword then stand in place and just hack away at him till he's dead. It makes a dude who's normally a big challenge into a total chump and it just looks laughably goofy when you see it in motion. <laughs> At number three, when running away from the boss works, uh, in Double Dragon specifically. So in the second level, the stage boss, if you run away from him, he'll freeze because he's not coded to climb down ladders. And if you just scroll him off the screen, he'll despawn. The game interprets this as him having been killed, which ends the level and sends you to the next one. Games back on the Nintendo Entertainment System could be brutal, and Double Dragon was really no exception. It's about as classic of a beat-em-up as you can get. You walk from left to right, slapping the snot out of enemies to get in your way and at the end of the level you take on a boss and you move to the next one classic formula you are a badass taking on other badasses and genuine tough guys don't run from a fight that's what makes this so funny it's a total subversion of expectations almost perfectly timed comedy the second level you climb up these ladders to reach the boss this dramatic pause the boss appears and then you just climb right back down the stairs you just went up you basically see this guy and and nope out and for whatever reason it works you keep going the game despawns the guy counts as dead and the level ends congratulations it's rare when a game rewards you for pure cowardice but double dragon was a groundbreaking game in more ways than one even if this little trick was obviously unintentional
And number two, letting the town folk beat the game for you in two worlds. A game that feels like it'll fall apart at basically any minute. It aspires to be an epic Skyrim like open world RPG, but it's fair to say it, it doesn't reach those lofty goals. The game's an awkward and often very goofy mess, but it's all part of its unusual charm, actually. I mean, how many games let you beat them within minutes of starting? And this isn't some crazy speedrun trick or anything, it's basic stuff. At the start of the game, you find the main bad guy standing outside the starting town, and normally if you try to fight him you get slaughtered but with a little help this guy gets a lot easier just tag him from far away and then run inside the walls of the nearby town the bad guy will retaliate and even kill you but don't worry you'll just respawn nearby and when you do you'll return to find every villager in town just wailing on him and because npcs are unkillable there's just nothing he can do he'll die and then will trigger the end cutscene it's like if darth vader got shot up by the rebels in the opening moments of star wars a new hope it's hilarious that the dudes who's supposed to be this unstoppable badass got ganked by a bunch of peasants with pitchforks like stand aside hero of legends we normal people got this one Finally, at number one, the ultimate anti-climax in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Something uniquely funny is killing the boss in an anticlimactic way. There's supposed to be a big fight, the most cinematic and challenging fight in the entire game, but no, guy ends up being a chump. Darth Malak in Knights of the Old Republic's no joke. He's a tough final boss if you try to take him on, you know, for real. And a big reason for that is that his chamber is filled with comatose Jedi that he can kill to restore his own health. Uh, that is cheating so you might as well cheat back uh, what's unusual about him is he just lets you wander around his boss chamber as much as you want you have to talk to him first before the battle actually begins so you got a little time to prepare so if you play smarter and not harder um you just place a ton of mines in a single location before the fight and then lure him over to that location and that's that he's dead it's kind of an embarrassing end to such a memorable bad guy like you couldn't see all the giant glowing mines not exactly an observant dark knight of the sith are you a couple of bonuses for you in metal gear solid 5 calling in a supply drop on Quiet's head. Uh, we've mentioned this before, but it's worth highlighting here. There's something really cartoonish about beating a boss by bonking him in the head with a box. It's tricky to line up, but once you got a good angle, it makes this challenging sniper duel into basically nothing. And it makes me laugh every time. And in Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, the Dark Link corner crouch trick. Supposedly the duel of the fates, the ultimate encounter with your shadow self. Um, did you fight this guy fair? Because I did not. You run in the corner, you crouch, and you start stabbing. It is not dignified or fair, but it works. And that's all really that matters. Like, I'm sure that Princess Zelda would prefer that you saved her rather than didn't save her, even if you look ridiculous. So, yeah. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.